Okay, note entry. Now, I picked a walking bass line on purpose because walking bass lines have pretty simple notation, and this is a simple video. And I am a simple man. So, it starts with a bunch of half notes, uh, which if you're a bassist, this is like a, a two feel. Okay. There are probably a jillion ways of doing this. This is what I would do. I press enter. Notice what this does. This, well, it does two things. It brings up the caret, C A R. A T C A R R A T. I can't. I can't spell. Okay, it brings up the carrot. It also like activates your mouse. Like I could, I can do that. I I do not do that. So I have to enter an E flat and then a C and then an F and then a B flat. You could click over here. Uh, much like Sibelius and and MuseScore, you select your note duration with a number. Um, in Sibelius quarter note is mapped to the number four. I think in Muse score it's quarter note is number five. I, I could be wrong. In Dorico, quarter note is six. So seven, as you ascend the numbers, goes to longer notes. Seven is half note. So if I press seven, see up here it switched? So what, whatever is highlighted here is the note, like the, the note value that I'm going to play or enter. So if I hit seven, and then what did I say? E flat? There's my E flat. Um, to be honest, the way I, well, let me just enter this stuff. So E flat and then C and then F and then B flat. Now here, so I'm gonna hit enter to stop note input because I'm gonna fiddle around with some stuff here. Uh, this B flat should actually be an octave lower. So I'm gonna, I wonder in Sibelius, I think I could click and drag it. I don't know. In Dorico, I'm gonna hit, oh God, it's a, it's a key command, get ready. So, that what I'm, what I'm doing is it's option command down. If I want to just move it, it would be option. So this moves it diatonically. I'm holding down option or alt and pressing up and down. On PC, it's alt, right? So it is the same on PC. Uh, and if I want to flip it down the octave, it's option plus command. This adding command to a pre-existing key, uh, uh, key command is a pretty common convention. It like amplifies the command, right? So if you're moving something with option and an arrow, if you want to move it further, you do option command arrow. If I want to make a selection, I hold shift. Like if I want to select this note and the next note, I hit shift arrow. Oh God. Oh, key caster. Oh no. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. You'll have to take my word for it. I'm hitting shift arrow. Oh, actually, this is a bad example. Let me add more notes. Right. So if I want to select this note and the next note, I'm hitting shift, shift and arrow, right? If I want to select the whole bar, it's shift, command, arrow. I think that's the same on Sibelius, right? So, oh, and on PC, it's control, right? So there's like the do a thing hotkey combination, and then there's do more of the thing which is that combination plus command. Okay, anyway, let's get back to note entry. Uh, so I've already shown you, but I'll, we'll, we'll do it again. I press enter, I press the note value I want, and I type the note in. What was it? E, C, there we go. You can get out of this note entry mode by pressing either escape or enter. I habitually press escape, because uh, that's how you do it on Sibelius, but enter works too. So I'll do the next bar. Uh, I need a G and a C. Oh, by the way, uh, I don't know if this is like by default, but generally speaking, when you hit enter, the note value kind of by default switches to quarter note. I wonder what would happen if I do it here, enter. Yeah, hmm, interesting. So it, I guess it defaults to the note value that you're on when you enter note input mode and if you're on a rest it'll default to quarter note i guess i don't know uh what do i gotta do here g and c g c and this oh they're both the octave down check this out i'm gonna select this the notes in this bar by pressing shift right arrow which keycaster doesn't like and then i'm gonna drop them down the octave simple uh the next bar we have different note values we've got a dotted quarter uh, and then an eighth tied to a quarter, and then a quarter. Here's how we do that. Enter. I'm already by default on quarter notes. I press period, and then I type the note in F. Now, oh no, it's it's not a dotted quarter at all. It's a it's a quarter note 
tied to an eighth note. But over here, it says it's a dotted quarter note. Two things. First, those are the same thing, right? A, a dotted quarter note is, a, it, it's a quarter note tied to an eighth note. Thing number two, depending on what else goes into this bar, that value might change or that the appearance of this dotted quarter note might change. Because if I were to end the bar there, believe it or not, the quote unquote proper way to type this in or the, the proper way to lay out the notes in the bar is like this. Uh, let me give you a better example. Uh, quarter note, dotted, but I'm going to put the dotted quarter note uh, on beat two and a half. So the reason it's definitely not going to let me do that is because in music, it, in, in music, in 4-4, four, four, basically neat. This is basically a hard and fast rule. You need to show the space between beats two and three. You, you can call it like the invisible bar line, but just for legibility's sake, uh, for the, for the musician, you got to show where the middle of the bar is. And if you obscure that, like, I think the way to do this is, uh, so I'm on dotted quarter note. Uh, I'm going to press O for forced duration. This is, I like, yeah, I know you can read it. I, I get that you can read it, but in a sight reading situation, this is really annoying. One, two, uh, it's just a little bit awkward to read. And I really don't mind that Dorico is making me write properly. If anything, it's, it's helpful because I don't have to go back through my work and proofread it to make sure I'm following the conventions of music notation. Anyway, and either way, you can turn it off. You can just, you can force whatever you want. Um, blah de blah de blah Okay. <laughs> that was a big tangent. So we're entering notes. We got a quarter note by default. We're adding a dot and the note is an F. Oh my God, it's not a quarter note. We've gone over this. Then we are going to add an eighth note tied to a quarter, which by the way, is worth the same as a dotted quarter note. So I could actually, I don't need to change it. I'm just going to type in B. Now it is the octave up. And, and then I'm going to take off the dot by pressing period again, and I have to hit B, which is up. So yeah, it's a little weird that initially we wanted a dotted quarter and we typed it in and it went quarter tied to an eighth. But on the flip side, I didn't have to do any tying here because this is essentially dotted quarter, dotted quarter, quarter. But Dorico has said, ah, well, a dotted quarter note belongs on beat one if it's followed by a note, uh, and then a dotted quarter note absolutely does not belong on, what is that, the end of two, so instead it breaks up for us. To me this is great, and as somebody who does a lot of proofreading and editing, I really wish that Sibelius would do that, because I spend a lot of time cleaning up rhythms. Anyway, okay, so I'll just keep typing. So remember, I'm pressing enter, uh, it defaults to quarter notes, but what do I want? I want half. So I'm going to hit seven, right? Or I could click it, I guess. And then I'm going to type in ooh, E. There is actually a way to type things into a specific octave, but I don't, I don't care. Uh, B. Okay, and then I have to do this dotted quarter, um, dotted quarter, quarter thing again. So I could enter that again. Or you could, if, if you're like me and you're really lazy, this is actually more work, I think. But I'm just going to copy this bar and paste it and then move the notes. Um, it is another way of doing things. So this one should be a C, so I'm going to move it down. This should be a G. Notice when I'm, when I'm, when I'm uh, going through to select notes, and I, when I hit right, I'm not just going to select this first note. It actually grabs the whole thing, which is, which is useful, and it's exactly what I want. So I'm going to move this up to a G, and then move this down to a C. Oops. Or sorry, an E. Uh, cool. So that's just another way of doing things. I'm going to add an F. I switch to quarters. I dot it. E. Again, it's not a dotted quarter right now because the conventions of Western notation dictate that if you had a, a you know a note this long followed by an eighth rest, you actually wouldn't do a dotted quarter note. You would you would show the tie. Uh, but in this case, that's not what we're doing. We have an eighth note so that's five and what's the note f is it f no it's d now here we have a tied note hmm how do we do that there are a couple ways uh i have a dotted quarter of another d let's get out of note entry mode so here's one way i'm again i'm just flipping around here 
I'm just going to press T. There you go. Now this is odd. Well, it looks a little odd, but this will become a dotted quarter in a sec. So I'm going to keep entering notes here. Do I really want an eighth? I think I do. So I could enter eighth, type in a G, press T to tie, I think. Quarter note. G, yeah, cool. And look, this corrected itself. Uh, and then, what am I doing? D, great. It's one way of doing things. Uh, what's the other way? Let's see. Okay. Uh, oh, here's another kind of weird way to do it. I probably wouldn't do this. Um, shift, option, arrow just kind of extends the note. Works. Uh, I could do that again here. Press G. Oops. Press Enter, then press G. Shift, Option, Arrow, extending the note. I, heck, I could I could just stick on eighth notes and enter every single note like that if I wanted. You would not do that. Uh, D, Shift, Option, Arrow, extend it. Uh, in the in this like really simple notation example, you wouldn't do it that way. But when things get weird, that is super handy. Um, there's really nothing complicated enough to warrant typing it like that. Uh, what else can we do in this example? Uh, I'm looking at bar, what is this, 4, 8, 12, 16? Yeah, 16. On my sheet I have a quarter note, and then two quarter rests, and then a quarter note. So, this is actually a good bar to look at for one other kind of concept. So, I'm going to enter the B flat, and then I need to put my next note in on beat 4. How do I get there? I'm stuck on beat 2. I, I, I don't want to click anything. There are two ways of doing it. If I press space, it'll move the carrot over by whatever note length you've selected, I believe is how that works. So if I was over here, I enter my note, press space, and then I enter my new note, which is what? D. Uh, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. However, let's see. So space will advance the carrot by the note value that you selected. Is that true? I think that's true. Space. But the left and right arrow, you'll notice, also advances the carrot, but only in this case by an eighth note, which you can see because the this is clearly like one and two and three and four and. And why is it only doing an eighth note? Well, down here, this is, I would, I don't know what Dorco calls this, I would call it like nudge value, um, which is kind of a daw term. But this little thing here is what determines that that left and right advancement thing. So I could switch that to 16th. Notice the divisions change up here. And now when I hit, oops, when I hit left and right, it's advancing by a 16th note. This is useful. For instance, let's say I wanted to enter a note on the second 16th note of beat four. I could do that like this. Space, 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 hit right, and then G. There you have it. And then we say, oh crap, well I was I was stuck on, on quarter note mode. I, I only wanted it to be a dotted uh, a dotted eighth note. Well, I just do shift option uh, left in this case to like shrink the note back by the subdivision. Bob's your uncle. What else can I do here? Let's say I want to, I actually say, no, you know what? It's a quarter note and it should be on beat four. I can do this option left, shift option right. So what I did was I moved it to the left by a 16th note, and then I expanded it to the right. Anyway, you wouldn't do this in this situation because the music is too simple, but if you're looking at more complicated things, this becomes invaluable. And you might be able to assign a key command to switch the grid value. I don't know. I tend to do that at the beginning of a project. Like, in this case, I'm looking at the paper and I'm seeing nothing is shorter than an eighth note, so I'll just just set it to eighth note, and then anytime I need to nudge something by a subdivision, it's it's an eighth note. It's very easy. Like, if I have this selected, I'm going to move it over an eighth. There you go. Oh, or I'm going to extend it by an eighth. Or two eighths. Get the gist? Cool. Okay, now, in this case, what was this? Oh, D. Okay, cool. And so this kind of loads your cursor with the note. I've literally never done this. Uh, I wouldn't even know how. I guess I click? Yeah. So, like, what's the next bar? Two half notes. So, I suppose the tantacruel way of doing this would be click over here, uh, G, C, G, 
C, and then I'm over here for half notes, or sorry, quarters, and I'm gonna go B flat, and then I need, I need B natural. See, if I was using the keyboard, I'd just hit a key. I guess it's this? B natural? Good. And then C. Yeah, and uh, using the mouse is weird because, you know, as the bars get populated with notes, they shift around and then you kind of lose your place. G. Yeah, d don't, don't do it that way. <laughs> I don't know, unless, unless you, uh, again, like if your keyboard's on fire or, or covered in acid or something, by all means. Um, so, ugh. uh, like what's the next bar? It's a half note, so I hit seven, I press F. I hit six, I press C, and then uh, B natural. Natural is zero, um, and then B flat. So I hit B again, because it's a new bar, so I don't need to re-enter the, the accidental. And then these are all up the octave, so I, I do that. Why, why use a mouse? Bizarre.